reading the heart sprung Russell diagram. Today, I can describe components of the universe, including stars, nebula, and galaxies, and use models such as the heart sprung Russell diagram for classification. Let's look at our starter. The diagram below shows the position of Earth at four different times during the year. The Northern Hemisphere experiences the beginning of spring when Earth is in what position? So I'm going to exit out of my screen and grab some web paint and explain this to you. What we want to know is in the Northern Hemisphere, Hey, I want to know when it's spring in the Northern Hemisphere. So we're looking at the hemisphere. There is the equator. So the top part of the Earth is the Northern Hemisphere. So I'm going to look at both of these two positions and determine what season it's in first. Okay, so here I can see that this hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. So here I have summer. And I must go counterclockwise in revolution around the sun. And my northern hemisphere in position two is pointing away from the sun, so it's winter. So to understand spring and fall, which would be here, I need to know what season comes after summer but before winter. So I go summer, fall, winter, spring. So spring would be in position three in the Northern Hemisphere. So let me back step, okay, and put fall here in the Northern Hemisphere. So whenever you're asked the seasons question, the trick really is, is to look at the two models to your right and left and understand what season it is in that hemisphere. Now here we were only looking at the northern hemisphere, but the southern hemisphere is just the opposite. So if they were asking about the southern hemisphere, we would just diagnose what season it is in position four and in two, and then we can figure out our equinoxes. These ones are difficult because the axis is neither tilted towards or away from the sun. So if you understand these two positions first, go counterclockwise, you can understand what seasons come in between summer and winter. Use the Hartsprung Russell diagram to answer the following questions. Number one, what does the X axis and the Y axis display? So your X axis is always here on the bottom. And here you read your titles. It says increasing surface temperature. So my X axis is showing me temperature, and temperature increases from the right to the left. So over here, if we look up and down, this area would be a cooler temperature than 50,000 over here. So this would be much hotter over here. Your y-axis goes vertically up and down, and the title reads luminosity, solar units. So luminosity means brightness. And so your brightness is going to increase from bottom to top. So what does the X and Y axis display? X axis displays temperature in Kelvins, and your Y axis um, displays luminosity or brightness. Where on the HR diagram is or are the brightest stars located? So if brightness increases from bottom to the top, or luminosity, remember brightness and luminosity are the same terms. So if brightness increases from bottom to top, your hottest stars are up here at 10,000, um, or your brightest stars are up here. So that would be the top part of your main sequence and some of your super giants. Where on the HR diagram are the coolest stars located? So your dimmer, I'm sorry, your coolest stars, cooler stars would be with lower temperatures. So your lower temperatures are to the right of the HR diagram. So it'd be all this area here. 
where do most stars exist or spend the majority of their life span? So here you can see the main sequence stars spend the majority of their life in these groups and they run diagonally from the top all the way to the bottom. Our sun is a main sequence star with a brightness of about a one. Objective, understand the HR diagram and how it combines temperature and luminosity. Remember, luminosity also means brightness, sometimes mentioned as magnitude, to categorize star. Activity instructions, watch the tutorial video as many times needed to be able to answer the following questions. Then complete the analysis questions on the next slide. So let's play the video. What luminosity is the HR diagram based on? Number two, can the HR diagram tell you what stage of life a star is currently in? Number three, does the color of a star tell you its temperature? And number four, can you identify stars on the HR diagram based on absolute magnitude and or temperature? The creation of the HR diagram. Back in 1911, two scientists decided to graph the stars. Hertzsprung of Denmark and Russell of America. They plotted stars based on their temperature and brightness. There are two ways to measure brightness. One is the luminosity scale, and this is what they base the brightness of all other stars on. Our sun has a luminosity of one, remember that, and all other stars are either brighter than that or more dim. They can also measure brightness in absolute magnitude. So make sure you check the labels so you don't make a mistake. Absolute magnitude is calculated a little differently. So our sun has an absolute magnitude of 4.83. Either way, the higher you go on the y-axis, the brighter the star will be. The x-axis is a little trickier, so pay close attention. The x-axis measures the temperature of a star, and the temperature matches a color. We can categorize the stars into spectral classes based on their color. Pretty. So we can tell the relative temperature of a star and the spectral class just by looking at its color. The tricky part is that the hottest temperature is on the left and it's blue. I know, I know. It literally goes against everything you've ever been taught about colors and temperatures. From there, it decreases all the way down to the cooler stars on the right that are red. Now to give you an idea of how cool these stars actually are, you have to remember that this temperature is measured in Kelvin. 2,500 degrees Kelvin, which is considered one of our cool red stars, translated to Fahrenheit is 4,040 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Okay, so let's summarize everything you just learned. The HR diagram is a graphic representation of stars. The x-axis can have three different categories, but they all mean the same thing. Temperature in Kelvin, spectral class, or color. These start with the hottest blue colors on the left and decrease to the cooler reds on the right, which are still melt your face off hot to us, but are cool and red in the star world. Brightness is either measured in luminosity or absolute magnitude on the y-axis, and it increases as you go up. Got it? Once the plots were formed, an interesting pattern appeared. They noticed that the relationship between temperature and luminosity was not random, but instead showed clusters of stars falling into distinct groups. Here's a short clip that takes a glob of stars and shows you how they fit on the HR diagram. This is a Hubble Space Telescope image of the crowded core of the globular cluster Omega Centauri. The brilliant colors of the stars are real. They correspond to stellar temperatures. They can also be used to trace stellar evolution. Astronomers like to know how blue the blue stars are and how red the red stars are. So we'll first sort these stars out by color, blue on the left and red on the right. Next, we'll sort the stars according to brightness. The brightest stars at the top 
and the faint stars at the bottom. The final plot you see represents different stages of evolution of stars. Stars spend most of their lifetime burning on the main sequence. When the fuel starts to run out, they expand to become red giants. They find a new source of fuel, helium, and burn blue hot. But even that runs out. They end up burning out as white dwarfs. Based on images for the Hubble Space Telescope, we've assembled a true plot that is a snapshot of the life history of stars in this ancient cluster. Cool, right? The HR diagram plotted out the different stages of a star's life cycle. Most of the stars fell into the middle diagonal, which is the main sequence stage of life. This makes sense if you think about it, because this is where a star spends 90% of its life, so this should be the most abundant category. Next, you have the cooler Red Giants cluster. Is it all coming together? They are brighter than their main sequence stage, but much cooler. The Red Supergiants cluster are above the Red Giants, as they are also very bright, but cooling off as well. The final stage that's still on the graph is your White Dwarfs cluster in the bottom left. These stars are super hot, but very dim, because their fusion has run out. Remember where these stages fall, because you will definitely need to know that later. Hopefully this has clicked in your brain, and we will now practice identifying stars using your newfound knowledge. Plot this star with a luminosity of 1 and a temperature of 5,000 Kelvin. Here's the luminosity of 1, and here's the temperature of 5,000 Kelvin. Did you get star D? It should be yellow, which is spectral class G. That's actually our sun. Let's try a different graph with two more questions. Here's one with labels everywhere, so always double check you are referencing the correct side. Which star is found in between 4,000K and 6,000K? Don't be tricked, remember to look at your labels. Did you get star B? You are correct. One more. Which star is red and has a luminosity less than one? Star D. Hopefully you remembered to check your labels again because I asked for luminosity instead of absolute magnitude. Use this video as a guide to help you finish your assignment as you plot along. Okay, so what star is the HR diagram based on our sun. Can you identify stars on the HR diagram based on absolute magnitude and or temperature? Yes, you can graph stars based on both of those. Does the color of a star tell you its temperature? Yes. Okay, red stars are cool, blue stars are hot. Can the HR diagram tell you what life stage a star is currently in? Yes, because they're grouped based on their age. HR diagram analysis. Click and drag the following labels and place them correctly on the HR diagram. So a main sequence. Remember, main sequence uh, stars run from top all the way to bottom. This diagonal band are going to be your main sequence stars. Okay, and that is not um, labeling correctly there. I'll have to redo that. White dwarfs. White dwarfs would be down here at the bottom. White dwarfs are dim stars, but they're hot. Super red giants are going to be located up here, kind of close to star A. Now, uh, these stars are very bright because their absolute magnitude and luminosity is up at the top, but they are also cool stars because of their temperature. And red giants are found in this cluster just below the super red giants. They also have a cooler temperature, um, but they're pretty bright. They're brighter than our sun on the luminosity scale. This diagram is based on the luminosity of one. So here is luminosity. Always look for the title they're asking for. So if they're talking about luminosity, find where it is on the graph. So it's vertically up and down. This diagram is based on the luminosity of 1, which is what star on the graph. So if this is luminosity 1 and we go across, we can see that star B 
is uh, with a luminosity of one. This star is also known as our sun. Our sun is a main sequence star with a luminosity of one. Star A has an absolute magnitude of, so here's my title on the y-axis, absolute magnitude. So star A, so here's star A, and I kind of want to drag it across to see what its absolute magnitude would be. So it looks like my absolute magnitude is increasing in number as I go up. So I would say star A has an absolute magnitude of negative 5 or negative 6, okay? Star A has a temperature of, so here's your temperature. Uh, so what you want to look for is star A and what temperature is it at? It's at 3,000 kelvins. Which star has an absolute magnitude of plus 12 and a temperature of 23,000 K kelvins? So which star has an absolute magnitude of 12? So let's find absolute magnitude and we're looking for positive 12. So our numbers are increasing down this way. So if it's going 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so absolute magnitude of 12 would be star C. It's temperature, here's 25,000, so we're going backwards, 24,000, 23,000, star C. Star connection question. The hartsprung russell diagram shows how the sun is classified among the stars. A star that's several thousand times brighter than the sun with a temperature lower than 4,000 kelvins would be classified as what? So we're going to use this diagram and it's showing how the sun is classified. A star that's several thousand times brighter. So if the sun's luminosity is a one, I'm looking for a star that's above one. So anything up in here would be brighter than the sun, but with a temperature lower than 4,000. So if this is 6,000, that's 3,000. 4,000 would be right around here. So I would need to look for a star in spectral class K that's brighter than the sun, so it could be a giant or a super giant, okay, with a temperature lower than 4,000. So it would be either a giant or a super giant. So my answer choice is a super giant in spectral class K. So here's my super giant, spectral class K runs vertically up and down here, and my temperature range is lower than 4,000. Star connection question. Describe Bernard's star brightness, temperature, and color. So here's temperature, here's brightness, and we're looking at Bernard's star. So we have described this star based on its brightness. So brightness increases from bottom to top. So you can see that Bernard's star is a dim star. It's not very bright. Uh, it's much less than our sun at one. So Bernard, we can describe it as being dim, not bright. How about its temperature? So our temperature, oop, it's going to be less than 3,800 kelvins because it's in this square. So I can say it's a cool star, less than 3,800. And what about its color? Well, it's labeled as a red. So I would say Bernard star is a red star. It's a cool star because its temperature is less than 3,800. And it's not a very bright star.